Yes. Uh, Jared online wants to know what is the method to your badness for keeping organized? I was hoping that maybe he could send me his. <laughs> um, okay, there, there actually is some method to my madness. Um, let's just put all this in small. Um, every established show that I work on has its own, for lack of a better word, logic. So when I'm starting a show, I know I'm, almost, I'm always going to have a narration track. I'm always going to have four dialogue tracks. I'm always going to have a fill track, and I'm always going to have a bleep track. Uh, I like to have my Nat sound on four tracks, music on four. Then I keep all my backgrounds on the orange ones. Sound design for me is on the red, and then the pink are the dreaded editor effects. These are the stuff, these are the ones that the video editor puts in to sell the show. And sometimes these are the ones that uh, certain people will fall in love with. It's like, well, well where, where, we made this great wind with, with the microphone, where's that? <laughs> so at the, at the end, at the very end, I will go sift through all this stuff. Uh, and I'll usually pull out whooshes and uh, Anything that's, that, that's good and usable, um, and, and really they don't have access to all the stuff that I have access to. So if, they, if there's a thunderstorm, they may only have three or four thunder hits that they'll just use over and over again, knowing that I'm going to go back and, uh, and replace them. Uh, then I have tracks specifically for um, graphic transitions. To the X. So basically every time we pan in, we have we got one of those which you can see as a group um, that I keep on their own tracks. That way, I can just pop them in every place that I need them. Uh, I have all my VCAs down here and my reverbs, and basically, I create a template out of this. So, the assistant sound editors. They have all of these tracks, and they have all the names correct, uh, and they have all the basic elements that we want used in the backgrounds. So when they send me a session, I can import it directly in. I can match the, uh, the uh, track names, and uh, it puts it exactly where it needs to be. Uh, and I usually don't change these once they get, once we establish it, I, I don't change them that much uh, unless there's something really big and then it, but, but then I got to get the editors in and say, okay, now we're doing something different. Uh, so the templates really, really helps out a lot because here are the different mixes. We've got um, we've got a comp mix, we've got our m and &E, Texas dialogue. A textless clips, dialogue music and effects, music undipped, effects, narration, and an M&E for the textless. Those all get output at the same time. And uh, everything gets bussed to one or more of these things. Uh, and I had the crazy idea that once I racked my brain to figure out how I was going to do it, I never wanted to do it again. So I, I, create, so I basically saved, saved one of the sessions as a, as a template so I know any effect that I put on the effect track, it's going to it's going to go to the comp mix. It's going to go to the M and E. It won't go to the dialogue. It'll go to the Texas M and E. It won't go to the music. It'll go to the effects, and it won't go to the narrator. The narrator will go to the M and E. I, excuse me, the narrator track and the comp mix. So, or any different combination thereof. Uh, that is. Uh, why I always work with a template. Uh, the other thing I do to keep myself organized is um, whenever I get new tracks, like say I get dialogue tracks, you can see I got a lot of playlists. I'm always duplicating my playlists. That way I can always go back and usually 
the lowest level is that's the OMF. That's what gets sent to us. And uh, then this is what I get from the editors. And then anytime I start making a lot of changes, I just continually will do that. So if I need to go back to anything, I can do it easily. Or if I get to a place where I'm thinking, this dialogue sounds terrible. Let me check the guide. It sounds better there. I know there's got to be a better track. I can go back to my playlists and find, uh, find the audio that I need really, really quickly. So between playlists and templates, uh, if I didn't have those, I would be a goner. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty much how I, how I keep myself. Or that, that and lots and lots of coffees. And I have a pretty decent memory, so I kind of know where things are uh, in the mix and what tracks they're on, so it's pretty easy to get around. Uh, oh, one other thing is um, on, uh, I, use a, I mix on an icon, and they have something called custom fader groups. Uh, if you use something with the Yukon protocol, they call them layouts. But I, ha I usually, I've got about six, no, 12 different custom fader groups of different groups of faders for the different steps that I'm going to have. Uh, so if I'm just doing dialogue and, and that sound, that's all I have on my console. Dialogue one is always going to be here. Narration is always going to be to the left of it. And that sound is always going to be to the right. No matter where they live on in the session, they always come up on the console that way. And then at the very last pass, I have all my VCAs, so I can do any last final tuning. And, uh, and then if someone says, oh, that graphic is too loud. Can you go in and play with that? I just hit one button, all my graphics uh, faders come up, and I can make the, the change really, really quickly. And you don't have to do the, uh, okay, I gotta find the track, or then I gotta bank, 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 bank. So th those, are, those are really the, the, the biggest things that I use to keep myself uh, from going crazy. That and a lot of coffee. Yeah? Uh, Chris wants to know, uh, what is your plan of attack for microphone dropouts and static glitches? Um, my, st well, static glitches, as we know, um, uh, I will use uh, I will use the uh, I'll use RX for that. Um, let me find my memory locations because I actually do have one. Oh, it's not even this one. Never mind. Let me close this out. I have a I've got another one that exactly is what he's talking about. Um, there was uh, a scene in Axemen that we don't get to Foley these things, really, unless I just open up a microphone. Uh, and so we had, we had a guy walking away. And it was, it was it, you know, it was like, it was, it was like that incredible, it was like an incredible Hulk moment, you know, it was very sad. You could hear the piano playing. And, uh, It was full of static. <laughs> so let me see if I can find that. There we go. Is that kind of like it? This, basically, I use a combination of almost everything. On this, I used I used clip reduction. I used declip and declick. I used a little decrackle to get rid of some of the buzziness. Uh, then I used replace, which the replace feature of spectral repair, to ultimately come up with. With that, so. Rx, 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 and then when I'm done with that, more Rx. That's that's how I do it. 